Hello, it's Karen Berniston here with an assembly video for one of our die sets. This is die number 1248, the stocking pop-up, and you can check out all of our die designs at karenberniston.com. The stocking pop-up has a very cool action to it. It makes use of two pop-ups actually, so an upper platform that holds the stocking and then a lower mechanism that has the slider on it. And so then whatever you put on that lower mechanism is going to slide up and out as the card opens. So that is a generic platform. You'll be able to use that year round for any theme. There are 16 pieces in the die set and it really is everything you need to make a great stocking pop-up card. However, we do have some accessory dies that coordinate really nicely with the stocking pop-up, including our small script Christmas and our Christmas borders too. Okay, jumping in on the assembly, there are three dies in the set that combine to make the two platforms. So these two are the lower platform, and this one is the upper. And so I'm just going to choose my materials and die cut those pieces. The stocking pop-up does not require heavyweight cardstock. In fact, for the lower platform that I'm working on right now, the lighter weight cardstock is probably better. So I'm working the fold that's in that piece back and forth a couple times to make it loose. And then for this piece, I've got folds for the tabs at the top. Those are going to fold away from me, mountain folds. So mountain fold here, mountain fold here. Then I have a diagonal fold, and that one's also going to fold away from me. So mountain fold on the diagonal. Then I've got two tabs at the bottom. Those are going to fold toward me. So valley folds at the base tabs. Okay, so this is ready to go inside the card, and what I use to help line it up over the fold is this little notch at the top. So see this little notch right here? That's in line with that little notch at the bottom. So if I just sketch that in with my pencil, you can see that makes a vertical line right there. So there's no fold in that location, but that is your visual lineup. That notch, the notch top and bottom, is visually how you line it up over the fold of the card. Okay, setting those aside for a second, I want to work the folds in my upper platform. So I always find it easiest to fold toward myself first. So I just stick my thumbnail in each of the five folds and fold them all towards myself. But then the two out on each end are going to reverse and become mountain folds. So essentially, when I've got it done, I've got mountain, mountain, valley, mountain, mountain. On each end of that upper platform, there's a little divot. And that divot is meant to help you line it up with the lower platform in the card. So it's basically going to center on that tab there that's at the base of the lower platform. So I put a little pencil line there to, to say that that's basically going to be the center of the upper platform. So what that means is if you want to have your upper platform perfectly centered in your card, then measure to the center of your card top and bottom and give yourself a mark so that you can line up the lower platform on your mark, then that will end up centering the upper platform. So hopefully that makes sense. Let me put the pencil line on the inside edge too. So basically the center of that lower tab is going to be the center of the upper platform. And if that is something that you care about, then make sure that you mark your card. Now it's these two lower tabs that are going to get the adhesive. Okay, so I'm going to start with that. I'm going to use my Lineco Neutral pH Adhesive in my fine tip bottle. We sell both of those items on our website. It is my very favorite glue. But I do recommend glue for this. I mean, you want this thing to hold up. It's going to be opening and closing and opening and closing. Okay, here's what I'm doing. I'm taking my long tab, the one on the right, and I'm getting my pencil line right to the center of the card. And then the line that I drew, my vertical line between the notches, is going right up the center fold of the card. So here's my pencil line at the center. Here's my pencil line for the fold. And what will end up happening is this tab here will be very straight. You can see that it's straight in line with the card. Okay, I'm going to leave it flat for now so that I can attach the second half of my lower platform. And that's what these upper tabs are for. So I'm going to add my glue to the two upper tabs, and then I'm going to attach the upper slider to it. So you see this little rounded edge here? That's going to line up perfectly with the rounded edge on the lower platform. That's got the same curve to it. So the first thing I'm going to do is add my glue to my two tabs. So coating my two tabs with adhesive. Once again, with this upper slider, I want it to look straight, and that curve that's on the left-hand side will line up with the curve on that left side there 
and then that will help me get good up and down placement and I can just give it a good visual to make sure that it looks straight and this curve lines up and this is straight. Okay. All right, so now I'm going to start to close the card slowly and make sure everything looks like it's coming forward, okay? Because I've been keeping this in the flat position, so it could be that it's collapsed inward, and I want to make sure that it's coming outward, all right? So I'm just going to go in there behind that diagonal fold and make sure that it's coming outward. I don't want to fold it on the pencil line that I made because that's not a fold. That should not be folded. I can, in fact, erase all my pencil lines now if I want to. Okay, so it's not supposed to be folding in that center fold. It needs to come forward. Okay, so once it's coming forward, then you can make the uh, upper part go the other way. So see how it's kind of like a zigzag here, like a Z when you look at it from the side. And then once you have it going in that position, then you should be able to close the card and give it a good pinch. Okay, so there's the lower platform. So as the card opens, it just slides that item up. And I apologize, I am still working on the lighting to make it not wash out those lighter colors, but I'm going to get it. One of these days, <laughs> I'm going to get it. All right, let's add the upper platform. So I've got that little notch right there, and that's going to line up with the, just butt right up to and line up with that lower platform tab. So I'm gonna add my adhesive all over that panel. Then I use the divot to just butt it right up next to the lower platform. Now, if you're working on a grid or something, that can be helpful to make sure that you've got this thing straight because you do want it nice and straight. So I'm just looking out here on my grid, making sure that I feel like it's nice and straight. Okay, and of course, butting it up to that lower platform is going to help with that as well. All right, now typically this middle fold will be valley, but just for assembly, you're going to make it a mountain fold so that you can fold that piece in the middle. The other tab will line up with the first one. I can add my adhesive all over that tab and then keeping everything nice and flat, I close the card and pick up that tab and move it to the other side. So now you can see it's moved over here and I've got this big tent up and over. All right, now I'm going to collapse the tent so that the middle fold becomes a valley and then I should be able to give it a good press in the closed position. So that's all there is to that. It's a very simple mechanism. You can see how generic it is. You could really decorate that for any style, any theme, any time of the year. There are stitched rectangles in the die set, one that will fit those small sides of the upper platform and then one that will fit the top. So I've die cut those out of pattern paper and then I'm going to glue them to my platform. For assembly videos, I just go stash diving on the pattern papers. So these pattern papers are older. They're just things that I found in my stash. Definitely, you can use whatever you've got in your stash to make a card similar to this one. In the course of decorating, you may find that your mountain pops back out again. Just make sure that you reverse that fold so that it folds into the card as a valley fold. And that is so generic, it really can be decorated with anything. But when you do want to make it a stocking pop-up, you have those pieces in the die set. So there's the die that will cut the stocking, there's a cuff, there's a toe protector and a heel protector. So putting those all together. And then now this is ready to go on that upper pop-up platform. And I just don't want to cross the fold with it. So it really can go anywhere that you want it to go there on that right-hand side, just as long as it doesn't cross the fold. So I'm going to keep my adhesive more in the middle section since I have the upper part of the stocking hanging above and the lower part of the stocking hanging below the pop-up. I don't want stray adhesive, so I just use the adhesive where it's going to touch the pop-up. And then I'm just looking for a location where the back pop-up is going to slide things up and out of the stocking. So, you know, that's just by eye where you, where you want it to go. Okay, for the holly and berries, I have added double-sided adhesive tape to the back of my cardstock before die cutting. And then you've got two pieces of holly in the die set and then a die that will cut three little holly berries. Now I like to use the double-sided adhesive on the back of the holly especially because then from the cushioning of the double-sided tape, it actually gives you that embossed look without having to change out your machining to an embossing sandwich. So it's kind of a little bit of a cheat. And it works when you're planning on putting the holly somewhere where it can be a sticker everywhere. If it's hanging out over air because it's on a pop-up, well then you've got to powder the back or you've got to put another one back to back or whatever. So it may be just as time saving to go back through with an embossing sandwich. But if you know you're going to be gluing 
your holly pieces down, then you can use that double-sided adhesive trick to kind of get the emboss for free. Now it is a stencil feature as well, so I'm just using a pen to go in and highlight the veining on the holly leaves. You can use a pen for the stenciling or you can sponge ink through the dye to highlight those veins or leave it tone on tone. It looks great anyway. And then what I'm going to do is just brush a little bit of ink around those holly leaves and then add them to my stocking. And since they're stickers, I can just choose a location, stick them down, add the holly berries over the seam. And then the final dies in the set are the present box and bow and then a two piece candy cane. So I'm going to assemble those pieces and then layer three of those presents onto my slider and then I'm going to add in my candy cane. So one of the things you have to watch with the candy cane is not to place it in a position so that it comes down and hooks right on the edge of your stocking. So I did not pay attention to that when I first put it on there. So I had to peel it off of there and in the process I kind of damaged my little present that was behind it. So now I'm just going to add another present over the top. That's how I'm going to deal with that little flaw in the paper. I'm just going to cover it with another present. So the only thing you have to watch is catch points. You know, just make sure when you're adding your items to that upper platform that you're keeping them on that right side, that rounded kind of tombstone right side of the slider is where all your items can go. And then just watch for catch points as it slides down. I also added a little bit of holly to the left side of the pop-up. You can see it right there back in the back, just to the left side of the fold. Now that only works with small items just because of the way that pop-up folds down. That item has to be able to flip over and hide behind the upper pop-up. So it would be good for holly or something small, but not anything big. And then another candy cane with some holly on that left side of the upper pop-up. And I just have to watch my location on that, that I keep it within the card. So just checking real quick that the holly stays in, and it does. For a greeting, I'm going to use our new small script Christmas set. So those words are really small, so you can fit into some small spaces, like for instance, this left side of the pop-up. I decided just to use the greeting itself, cut out of two colors and then layered over the top of each other at a slight angle for a drop shadow. And I'm going to do holly jolly greetings. The die set does include full shadows for each of those words. I just didn't have room for a full shadow since I was putting three words up here on the pop-up. But once I get that on, now I've got that cool little handwritten holly jolly greetings on the left side of my pop-up. So simple assembly on the stocking pop-up with just a really fun motion to it. I thought borders along the edges of the pattern paper would look nice, so I looked to our Border Blends Argyle set for a thin border and then just die cut enough to go all the way around the pink paper and then in the corner so that I didn't have to be so precise with matching them up, I just added some holly berries. And I didn't add one in the lower right corner because I knew I was going to be covering that up with an oval as a place to sign the card. And that little oval came from our Rectangles and Labels Crosshatch set. I always design the inside of my pop-up cards first, and then I just take my leftover materials and do kind of a simple lead-in on the front. So in this case, I used our new Christmas Borders 2 to make some borders, and then again with that small script for Ho Ho Ho. So just using up leftover materials and having a nice tie-in to the inside decoration. My finished card measures four and a quarter by five and a half. That's a standard A2, so I would just need an A2 envelope. But you are in charge of your card size, and the stocking pop-up is slimline friendly, so you can fit that down into a three and a half inch width card if you want to use it in a, in a slimline. You can also stack them, you know, do more than one if you're doing a nice tall card. You can start adding other items to the mechanism that comes in the stocking pop-up. So the Witch and Cauldron set, for instance, is sized to perfectly fit that mechanism, and then you can have items rising up and out of the cauldron. Sandy Diller on our design team made a series of Halloween cards that use that stocking pop-up mechanism with other items. So this first one's got a very spooky, scary theme with a graveyard and ghosts rising up from behind the tombstones. The next one has some trees and graveyard again, and this time the witch comes up and goes flying. And then she also made one with a haunted house with some ghosts flying up from behind the house. So you really can make some great Halloween themed cards using that mechanism from the stocking pop-up. For this card, Sue Small Crider turned it to be a top fold card and then doubled the mechanism. So she has one where the 
pumpkin slides out, in this case on the right, and then she's got one on the other side where it pops up from the left, and then you look at it as a top fold card with these slide out pumpkins. Sue also made this birthday card where she has a sea turtle coming up from behind the mechanism, and I like how she used the pattern paper to just travel right through the upper platform. And even for Christmas cards, you don't have to use the stocking. So here is another card by Sandy where she's added a basket to the right-hand side with a bouquet of flowers that comes up and out as the card opens. And I'll end with some additional card ideas from our very talented design team. This winter card by Jen Webster is so adorable. She's added snowflakes to acetate, and then those rise up from behind the snowman. Jen also made this fun Christmas card where Santa rises up from behind the chimney. I love the way Lois styled the gingerbread men in this stocking pop-up card. And then here's a wonderful scene by Frances Byrne using the witch and cauldron on the stocking pop-up mechanism. Lois also made a Halloween card using the holiday house on the mechanism with some ghosts rising up from behind. Here's a slimline-sized card by Nikki Foden where she has created a giant elf coming up from behind some presents. Nikki also made this custom birthday card for her brother who likes a particular type of movie, which you can probably guess, wishing you a killer birthday. I love it. Nikki is so talented at repurposing dyes to make new characters, so in this case she made an elf to fit in the stocking for this Ho 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 card. For this birthday card in Hogwarts colors, Suzanne Smith stacked two stocking pop-up mechanisms inside the card and then used the witch and cauldron. You can also pull the stocking out of this set and use it individually. So for this card, Frances Byrne animated it using a BAM box. The stocking pop-up is available now at a lot of your favorite local and online retailers, as well as from our website, KarenBerniston.com. Thanks for watching. If you click on the website link, you'll go to KarenBerniston.com, where you can purchase these dies as well as find links to our other social media accounts. You can subscribe to this YouTube channel and check out some of my other videos. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.